We want an immediate end to police brutality and murder of black people. Well, perhaps more than anything else, the Black Panthers stood for the right of black people to defend themselves against white violence, even if it meant carrying weapons and using them in self-defense. But it also brought violent conflict with police. And by 1969, at least 28 Panthers had been killed in shootouts with police. Not many people know that the Panthers got some of their first weapons from a man named Richard Aoki. And nobody knew that Aoki was an informant for the FBI. A former FBI agent had heard that I was doing research, and he contacted me. Uh, his name was Bernie Threadgill. And he says, hey, I know that guy. And he said, Aoki was, was my informant. I developed him. Oh, yeah, he was a character. He said, I don't have any interest in communism. And uh, I said, well, why don't you just go to some of the meetings and tell me who's there and, and what they talked about. So one thing was another, and he became a real good informant. Well, I had never heard of Richard Aoki before Bernie Threadgill told me about him. So I, I started to research who was Richard Aoki. Aoki was a prominent activist in the San Francisco Bay Area during the 60s. Definitely Richard was uh, someone who looked at things politically. The, the impression I got was basically, if you become his friend, you know, he's like your friend for life, you know. And he was like that with most people, you know. He had been very involved in the Third World Liberation Front strike at Berkeley in 1969. He was one of the most militant leaders of that strike. Aoki had also been involved in a group called the Asian American Political Alliance, one of the first Asian activist groups in the country. He'd also had a connection with the Black Panthers. Aoki was head of the Berkeley chapter of the Panthers and later became a field marshal in the Panthers. And it was known that he had given the Black Panthers guns. I knew from my research that he was a very smart and complex person. He had a fascinating history. His family was interned uh, during World War II. He'd grown up in West Oakland in a very rough neighborhood, predominantly black and impoverished neighborhood. He was part of a gang. He was involved in a lot of petty crimes. Co-valedictorian in his junior high school. When he was in the Army, he became a firearms expert. So I was really curious to know about this other side of his life. I'm wondering if you remember um, a guy named Bernie Threadgill? Bernie Threadgill? Yeah. No, I don't think so. What I, I was told in my research that during this period of time, you actually worked for the FBI. They tell you that? Uh, Bernie told me that. He did? He did. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> informants were used when I was in the FBI. An informant rep would report on the inner workings of an organization. They can keep you up to date on the thinking of the leadership of the organization, whether it's going this way, that way. Someone like Aoki is perfect to be in a Black Panther Party, because I understand he's Japanese. Hey, nobody's gonna guess. <laughs> he's in the Black Panther Party. Nobody's gonna guess that he might be an informant. Through his involvement in, in the socialist groups, Aoki established his political credentials and became known to other activists in the Bay Area. Aoki was a student at Merritt College, and that's where he met Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, who would go on to found the Black Panther Party. The Panthers at that time were very concerned about police brutality in Oakland. They wanted to end police brutality, and they had an idea that one way to do that would be community patrols of the police. And in these community patrols, members of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, if they saw police interacting with citizens... There would be a Black Panther present with a camera and also an unloaded shotgun. 
The goal of that was to be an eyewitness to prevent any possibility of police brutality. But they needed guns in order to do these patrols. So they went to Richard Aoki. We went to a third world brother we knew, a Japanese radical cat. He had guns. We told him that we wanted those guns to begin to institutionalize and let black people know that we have to defend ourselves as Malcolm X said we must. And Aoki did. He provided not only weapons, but weapons training. Threadgill had given me a detailed account of how he recruited Aoki as an informant, but I wanted to know more. In reviewing the records, there was a list of informants. Most of their names were blacked out, but for some reason, Richard Aoki's name had not been blacked out, and he was listed in the report as informant T2. Why was he arming the Panthers, and was the FBI involved in it? Under J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI had a secret operation called COINTELPRO, an acronym for Counterintelligence Program. Hoover was very anxious to go after the Black Panther Party. The goal of the FBI was to, first of all, neutralize them. Techniques ranged from sending false letters or planting negative news stories to trying to foment violence between the Panthers and other groups. The FBI also used informants as part of its COINTELPRO operation. When Richard uh, passed away, he had in his apartment uh, two uniforms neatly pressed in his uh, apartment. And one uniform was the Black Panther uniform. The other uniform that he had laid out uh, and neatly pressed was his army uniform. <laughs> you know. The FBI had released about 1,900 pages on various organizations that Aoki had been involved with, but it claimed it had no files on Richard Aoki himself. This was very strange because Aoki was a major political activist. Aoki wouldn't even have to be a member of the party if he just knew Huey Newton and Bobby Seale. And he went out to lunch with them every day. They would have a main file, but to say they don't have a main file is ludicrous. In my opinion, the FBI has a responsibility to the community to give a full accounting of what its relationship with Richard Aoki was, especially because Aoki played such an important role in arming the Black Panthers. One of the things I learned uh, in my research is that mm. Richard had actually worked for the FBI. Oh, how was, how was that? Uh... Well, um, he never mentioned this no. to you? No. Uh -uh. I mean, that's like a big surprise to me, you know, in terms of... I don't think I was ever... heard any information, you know, as far as, you know, him even talking to the FBI, yeah. So that's kind of a shocking thing for me to hear, yeah. He, he pretty much compartmentalizes all his uh, different parts of his life. You know, he has friends from this period, friends from that period, <laughs> and then the, uh, you know, uh, Asian American movement and the World Strike period. Am I wrong? I think you are. Yeah. So, w would you say it's untrue that you ever worked with the FBI or got paid by the FBI? I would say it. Yeah. And 
I'm trying to understand the complexities about it, and I and I think it is complex. I believe it is, and layer upon layer. <laughs> 